Food and drink you obtain can be selected and used from the inventory screen. It probably goes without saying that by eating and drinking, you satiate your hunger and quench your thirst. completes your first mission. When you return to base camp, we'll automatically send to the storehouse any- I've detected a new memory board. Sync with me to update your iDroid data. Eating raw meat is dangerous. Doing so will make you sick. So be sure to cook it properly. just went over some basics. After all, this may the rest now then. The core set up observation posts around Dita. We detected a memory board during your exploration earlier. Captain, during your exploration earlier, we detected a memory board left behind by the Karen Corps. However, at the same time, we also detect a large number of wanderers in that area. It's highly likely that when you go to retrieve the board, you're going to have to fight for it. You should craft units that will aid you in taking on multiple enemies.
When you craft a weapon, you can equip it off the bat, or send it to the storehouse. Also, when you access the storehouse, you can change equipment such as your weapons and units. All right then, go and retrieve the memory board. I've marked its predicted location on the map. Check it on your iDroid.
acquired from memory board. I will analyze it. Return to base camp. Investigation Day 3. The purpose of this voice log is to serve as a record of my activities here, separate from my official reports to Wardingcliff Section HQ. I find this place to be much like our own world, except everything is in ruins. It's known as Dite, a name borrowed from a city in hell that appeared in Dante's The Divine Comedy. Personally, I don't believe in hell, but... Approaching the weight limit of what you can carry. At this rate, it'll impact your activities. So be careful. And member of the Caron Four, which was formed to investigate this world. For those of you that slept through your college lit class, Caron is also taken from Dante's seminal work. He's the ferryman who carries departed souls across the river to the afterlife. It was Good Luck who came up with both names. Good Luck was always a fan of Dante's works, but I never cared for such flights of fancy. Although I respect him immensely, I don't understand his interest in such unscientific pursuits. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. My role in the Corps is focused on research, but I have also been given authority over this particular investigation. I guess you could say I'm something of this squad leader. My father invested heavily in this project, which played no small part in my assignment, for sure. But we need not get into that. Even though I'm technically the leader, the base camp facility is actually managed by Virgil AT9, an artificial intelligence developed by Good Luck himself. Apparently, she is responsible for communications, data analysis, and facility operations. She uses the instruments we carry on us to manage the data we gather in the guards. Pay to attention to your stamina. As well as the collection of the... You should rest before you're out of gas. ...necessary for controlling the wormhole. To be honest, Good Luck's programming is nothing short of revolutionary. And that is putting him on me. It's almost as if his mind alone is centuries ahead of us. Perhaps the most interesting thing is that Virgil's responses to our queries are strangely humanic. She speaks in a solemn tone and has a tendency to be rather rigid at times. But she also possesses a keen sense of humor that I never had. It boggles the mind to think how many people were used as reference points to develop their personality and character. At any rate, I should be able to work towards my objective starting tomorrow. I am here to research wormhole-related technology, as well as investigate the Wanderer's ecology. One of the main objectives of my research is to find a way for us to manually control these wormholes. There is a material in this world known as Kuban energy, which we believe is essential to controlling wormholes. As such, we must harvest as much of it as possible. If we can eventually perfect this technology, we will be able to instantly transport objects anywhere on the planet. Indeed, we may... May finally be able to realize the world system that Nikola Tesla proposed so long ago. 
However, the technology is incomplete, and opinions as to its viability vary widely within our section. I understand good luck. When you return to base camp, the lab screen is updated. As a scientist, it's impossible to analyze your travel log and the results. Time to analyze the data. Please synchronize your iDroid with me here. Personal objections and be assigned to the team in order to continue my wormhole research on the cutting edge of the field. I figured that if I didn't, I would never be able to catch up with him. It is my desire to be the one to finally find that which has managed to elude good luck for so long. I detect that you're hungry. Your mission requires that you look after yourself, Captain. Raw meat is dangerous. Doing so will make you sick, so be sure to cook it properly. The data on the memory board you obtained becomes a analysis complete. The board contains research data on DTE, primarily on Wanderers and Kuban Energy, as well as operational records. So that's part one of the captain's mission in the back. No, the data that was recovered is only part of the entire record. But on these expeditions... And for a machine, you're pretty damn vague. After connecting with the... According to this data, the Karen Corps was more than equipped to handle the Wanderers. And how'd the unit get wiped out? Unknown. The data... With more data, our memory may be fully restored. With the additional information available to me, I've detected multiple new memory boards. The details are available in the Situation Report. Captain, there is something I have to tell you. Memory data successfully restored. New equipment can be developed. Craft the wormhole collector. This is needed to carry out the remainder of your mission.
Okay, preparations are complete. My name is Enrique. I'm a communications officer for the Karen Corps, which has been tasked with investigating the world known as DITE. It's my duty to keep a log of our unit's activities and report back to headquarters on a regular basis. I'll start by introducing our team. The Karen Corps is made up of 121 members. There are a number of researchers and engineers involved with the wormholes, as well as Pay various other specialists here to investigate this world. And of course, you should rest you before you're out of our illustrious sponsor. Along with them, we have a medical team in case of emergencies and an active unit to carry out the research and exploration on the front lines. Basically, the active unit is filled with military types, and they're also assigned to protect the numerous civilians on our team. Us communications officers are also a members of the special unit. Is nearby. Finally, I guess you could consider the final to member of the group to be our highly Proceed advanced support caution. AI. I was also a radio operator back in Vietnam, but the survival skills I showed there helped earn me a spot on this mission. I was told I'd be serving my country and would be rewarded beyond my wildest dreams. Who could turn down an offer like that, huh? Anyway, enough talk about money. Back to our squad members. No two are alike, which at least makes things interesting around here. And you'd be surprised how many cute little honeys there are on the engineering team. There's this one girl named Chloe. She's a little older than I like them, but out here, I'll take what I can get if you know what I mean. I thought I was gonna be surrounded by a bunch of dudes on this trip. But now, it looks like I've got a paid vacation to explore the great unknown with a fine-looking woman. Anyway, moving on. I suppose I should give my impressions about this world. The first thing we came across here were the ruined buildings. There were various vehicles strewn about here and there. Basically, it all looked like the kind of stuff you'd see back home. I heard this was some kind of parallel world to our own, but it pretty much looked and felt like Earth. If I had to state a difference, I suppose it'd have to be the fog. It's like the thickest I've ever seen. We found an area untouched by the fog and are building a base camp here in order to conduct our mission on this world. Thankfully, the materials we need for the various facilities are already here and the construction is proceeding smoothly. So I guess it's only a matter of time before we can start exploring this world and reporting our findings back to HQ. That's it for now. What we originally thought was fog upon arriving on this world is actually made up of minute particles and is apparently better referred to as dust. It's difficult to see through this dust and it also makes it difficult to breathe properly. It goes without saying that you don't want to be exposed to it for too long. You need an air tank if you're going to be out there working in it, but... Well... That's enough about this particular topic, I think. There's something much more important to discuss. To put it frankly... Our unit is rapidly falling apart. It's like there is absolutely no leadership at the top. I'm not exactly sure what the top brass were thinking when they put this crew together. It's clear this has all come about because we were never given a clear definition of our mission priority. Some people focus on eliminating wanderers, while others think it is more important to protect the survivors and secure materials for our research. 
To make matters even worse, we're essentially forced to serve two different masters. There's Section HQ, and then there's the group responsible for actually funding the expedition. It seems there is always some kind of struggle going on between the people in charge. Me and some others constantly try to intervene, but it's just like... If you enter the dust unprepared, you most you likely won't come out of it alive. I don't know what's gonna become Be of us. Be sure to steer clear of it for that now. Said, there is one man here that we can depend on. As far as I can tell, he's the only one who looks at a situation with a level head and can decide on a rational course of action to take. He joined the squad as an engineer, but he really knows what he's doing out there in the field. It might be good to work alongside him for a while and see what we can accomplish together. Maybe I can get him to help me restore order to the team as well. There's just one problem. He's not exactly the chatty type. Pay attention to your fluidity. Being dehydrated will affect your physical abilities. Investigation Day 31. Our communications with headquarters have been unstable lately. It appears to be due to excessive wear on our communications equipment. We are consulting with the tech team as to the feasibility of procuring replacement parts. Failing that, we are likely to lose communications completely at some point. On the other hand, our research into the Wanderer's ecology is proceeding quite well. One thing we learned is that they seem to possess a shared consciousness. That would definitely explain everything we observed so far. This was one of our most recent discoveries. We captured one and tried to take it back with us, but other nearby Wanderers immediately began to converge on us, almost as if our prisoner had given off some kind of distress signal. As a result, we were able to come up with a hypothesis regarding this shared consciousness. The crystalline structures within the Wanderers' bodies appear to be made of Kuban energy. We've theorized that they use such energy to communicate with each other in a manner similar to the wormhole technology. With this hypothesis in mind, I would like to continue our investigation. There is one more thing I must mention. We have determined that the crystalline structures on the Wanderer's backs envelop the human brain at the point of contact and then solidify there. It may be that by destroying these crystals, we can stop the Wanderers from functioning. According to the research team, the most effective way of dealing with the Wanderers is to sneak up behind them and destroy the crystalline structure with a knife. I suppose, like any other living organism, they cannot function without a brain. Time to analyze the data. Please synchronize your iDroid with me here. Partial memory restoration complete. I've also reassembled fragmented data. With this data recovery, you can now use the skill trainer. By using the power of Kuba...